Lord Owen, Europe's peace negotiator, arrived in Sarajevo, a city under siege for nine months. He brought a clear message to the people of Bosnia. Don't, don't, don't live under this dream that the West is going to come in and sort this problem out. Don't dream dreams. I took on the job fully knowing that all the key countries, the United States, the British, did not believe that this could be helped in any way by military action. This perfectly suited the leaders of the Serbs in Bosnia. Their forces had taken control of two-thirds of the country. I am aware that the international community has enough 10,000 soldiers, 5,000 in the Zvornik and 5,000 in the Posavi in the corridor, and the Serbs are ready. Danas modern grad, jedna je od najstarijih naseobina u našoj zemlji. Nepregledne šume i obilje vodenih izvora privukli su ljude da ovdje osnuju svoja staništa. In the first months of the war, Srebrenica had become a refuge for thousands of Muslims driven from their homes. The Bosnian Serb army laid siege to the town attempting to starve its population into submission. In the spring of 1993, they began a final offensive. J'ai eu le sentiment que il s'agissait de balayer la région et de la vider en disant c'est fini maintenant ces types là nous ont fait trop de mal on les on va pas les massacrer on va les General Morion took personal command of a food convoy bound for Srebrenica. But the Serbs had no intention of letting him feed their enemy. Donc j'ai tout fait à ce moment-là pour leur dire vous me dites que vous voulez la paix, je veux bien vous croire. Je vous crois sincère. Montrez votre sincérité, laissez-moi aller là-bas. The Serbs gave way. They told Morion he could enter Srebrenica but without any relief supplies, and they showed him the route he must take. Alors ils m'ont laissé partir sur cette piste et parce qu'ils savaient qu'elle était minée. Donc ils ont dit de toute façon il passera pas. We set off, and uh, the good general, the good commander that he is, the ex foreign legionnaire, uh, all you could see was a cloud of diesel, and then there was a god almighty bang and the lead vehicle, the lead uh, truck, had hit a mine. Uh, and I can remember, first of all, it reverberated around this valley. C'était le sol qui était protégé contre les mines. C'est là que il faut voir un signe euh, du destin, bien sûr. On y croit toujours quand on est dans ce métier. When they reached the town, Morillon and his aid workers came face to face with the results of ethnic cleansing. C'était ininterrompu dans la nuit. Les gens marchaient en silence. Et il était chaud. Je veux dire, la température là était moins 20 en nuit. Il était chaud. C'était incroyable comme spectacle de misère. Morion immediately sought out the commander of the Muslim fighters defending the town. The Muslims welcomed the commander of all UN troops in Bosnia as an honored guest. 
combien de temps vous voulez rester Combien de temps vous voulez rester Combien de temps il faut Je pense qu'il faut en... Having established the UN's right of access, Morion set off back to his headquarters in Sarajevo. A crowd gathered. Some were thrusting letters into our hands, uh, some were asking us to contact people, and then it was wind up the engine and move forward. And I remember you, with these things, they, they lurch. And it lurched. <laughs> Whether we were hostages or whether we were prisoners, we were not free to move. But the demonstration was not quite as spontaneous as it appeared. Ali sam poslao šifrinu poruku Naseru da na svaki način zaustave da Morion ne napusti Srebrenicu sve dotle dok ne obezbedi sigurnost stanovništva u Srebrenici. For two days Morion was held in the post office. He had to escape. So he said to me, have you got a flag? I said, yes. Got the UN flag? Yes. He said, I want a tannoy. Anyone got a tannoy? So a tannoy was produced. So the general was all a general with his, you know, uh, 40 Davidoff cigars a day type voice. And he booms into this tannoy. I deliberately came here. And I have now decided to stay here in Serbarica. You are now under the protection of the UN forces. He decided to stay. Now, we all thought we were prisoners. <laughs> But the general turned the tables, and they applauded. Kad se sjetim tijel trenutka, meni u ušima mojim odzvone njegove riječi, ne bojte se, ostajem sa vama. But if this doesn't work, general, what do you think it will do to the people? Because they won't do it. It will work, it will work. Morion's promise had changed UN policy. Okay. Out! Out of top of the he had committed his neutral peacekeepers to the Muslim side at the very moment the Serbs were closing in. His masters in New York were taken aback. General Morion took a lot of risks. I think some of the things he said, uh, if they're replayed now, uh, look a bit misleading in the heat of the moment uh, and perhaps would be considered by some as being a bit over the top. Morion's promise was quickly put to the test. Good evening. The battle for Srebrenica tonight appears to be over. Only the terms of the surrender remain to be worked out. The Security Council is meeting as we go on air in an atmosphere of extraordinary confusion. When you see the, when the massacres are occurring at such, uh, with such magnitude and the precedent that they set for the rest of the world, uh, our countries have a great moral authority to talk about these matters. Thank you so much. Thank you. The leader of the UN's powerful non-aligned bloc introduced a resolution declaring Srebrenica a safe haven. This would oblige the UN to defend the town. We reintroduced it uh, after a tremendous conflict with the major powers, fundamentally with the UK, France and Russia. There was never the slightest chance of the United Nations protecting Srebrenica. Deter attacks on, that's wording that is often used. Protect, no. General Morion was putting them in a very uncomfortable situation in which they were for the first time being really involved into a confrontation with Belgrade and the Serbs, and they didn't want that. The final wording sounded tough, but the Europeans had won. They deleted the term safe haven. Now, instead of defending the town against the Serbs, the UN merely asked the warring parties to treat it as a safe area. Those against the draft resolution has been adopted unanimously as resolution 819. The safety zone in Srebrenica. That will be a safe area. Well, what does that mean? Safe area? You know? Okay. The next morning, 
the UN commanders on the ground had to present the resolution to the Bosnian Serb general Radko Mladic. Mladic is mounted on his grand chevaux and saying, I'm the army of the Serbs. It's not possible to consider it like that. General Mladic named his price for not overrunning the town. I gave him a proposal that was consisted of that to finish the time of the purchase of the weapons on the Muslim side. And Mladic was raised and was raised to play a ping-pong with a French colonel during three quarters of the hour, while the Bosnians were in a small room. Srebrenica's protector found himself urging the Bosnian government commander to make 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 the Bosnian Ovaj, na što je on odgovorio da meni da se to mora uraditi upravo onako kako mladi straži jer situacija je bezlazna tamo. The Bosnian government commander bowed to the inevitable. The UN claimed a victory. They had halted the Serbs. But General Mladic knew he could take the town whenever he wanted. El acuerdo fue en definitiva desmilitarizar a cambio de la presencia de una compañía canadiense en el lugar y a cambio de la rendición de Srebrenica para convertirlo en una safe area que en términos eh, serbo-bosnios era un gran campo de concentración rodeado y controlado militarmente por ellos. A week later, President Clinton opened the Holocaust Museum. Srebrenica had brought home to everybody there the parallels between Serb ethnic cleansing and Nazi genocide. I have been in the former Yugoslavia, and Mr. President, I cannot not tell you something. We must do something to stop the bloodshed in that country. Ethnic cleansing, what does that remind you of? And what is our responsibility? And who stood there while the Jews were being taken away? And how to deal with such questions, the international community offered up the Vance Owen plan, devised by two ex-foreign ministers. Seventy percent, they have a sort of horseshoe. Lord Owen went on American television to explain it. If we're going to get peace by negotiation, then we've got to get these three peoples together. They've got to learn how to share power and they've got to share the country and we've got to stitch it together again. But we were not only keeping, or if I would say stitching the country back together again, but we were also going to reverse ethnic cleansing. Bosnia would remain one country with 10 provinces, each with control over education, transport and their own police force. This allowed the Serbs local control of much of the territory they now held. But the provinces were so arranged that it would be impossible for the Serbs to form a separate state. It was a bit too idealistic. It was actually attempting to roll back a victorious army, the Serbs, by some 27%. Lord Owen flew to meet President Milosevic, the man behind the Bosnian Serbs. The UN had given Owen a new weapon. The threat of crippling sanctions on Serbia and their ally Montenegro if they did not back his plan. What is at issue is whether the Serbian people in Bosnia-Herzegovina, in uh, Serbia and in Montenegro take on the world. Well, that Sunday morning was the first time really I'd ever had both a stick and a carrot. The stick was the UN Security Council resolution, which was toughening up sanctions. Z druge strane je bila šargarepa ponuda da se prihvati Vensovinov plan, plan koji je u osnovi po našim procjenama omogućavao da se politički ciljevi realizuju političkim sredstvima, a ne više ratu. Nema drugog rešenja nego rešenja koje će podjednako zaštititi interese sva tri naroda. Kada je Vensovenov plan predložen, on je imao manje više uravnotežen prilaz. What they wanted to know was in the interim presidency could the Muslims exert their majority over Croats and Serbs. Dobili smo pojašnjenja i predsjednik Milošević je rekao: "OK, u redu, nas ste ubijedili." They fact we had a veto. Pretty difficult form of government instantly I have to say, but that was the structure that was on offer. 
And I remember Milosevic sort of stretching back and saying, you know, I feel confident to go content with this decision. He knew perfectly well it was going to cause problems, but the first time that day, he had really backed a peace plan in its totality. Owen now summoned all the parties to a hastily arranged conference. The Bosnian president, Alia Izabegovic, had already agreed to the plan. So had President Tudjman of Croatia and the Bosnian Croats. Only the Bosnian Serbs remained. I was explaining to Milošević that after our signature, there will be great forces in the United States and that we will be able to be satisfied that we will not be able to live. But Owen was confident that President Milosevic, as their financial and military overlord, could make the Bosnian Serbs sign. Elpizo ke prosevkome to minima poti nathina pros tus vasanismenus laus tis Bosnias er Herzegovinis na ine minima harmosino. As soon as the formalities were over, Milosevic bundled the Bosnian Serbs up to their suite. He assured them that in backing the plan, he was not betraying them. Glavni, njegov glavni argument je da to neće funkcionisati. Da će da plan propadne tokom implementacije. Mislim da oni nisu razumeli prednosti Vensovenovog plana, jer su suviše bili obsednuti teritorijalnim pitanjima. On je rekao, zar je moguće, Radovane, da ti ovo ne vidiš? Zar je moguće da ne shvataš da ovo nije suprotno sa onim o čemu ti pričaš? Je li moguće da smo toliko glupi pa da ne vidimo jasno neke stvari? To je za nas bilo veoma riskantno. To je veliki rizik. Ja nisam mogao to da prihvatim. Jer sam znao da je, recimo, međunarodnoj zajednici dovoljno 10.000 vojnika, 5.000 u zvornik i 5.000 u posavino koridor i Srbi su gotovi. Nismo ih ubedili ni do 11. Podružujemo u 12. Nismo ih ubedili ni do 12. Molimo se jedan sat, za jedan sat sednicu. Svako nas je živ nagovarao da prihvatimo. Čak su i konobari koji su nam donosili kafu pitali da li ćete vi ovo prihvatiti. Onda smo tom stolu prišli Milošević i ja i rekli smo im svo vrijeme je isteklo. Karadić u jednom Nemom grču očaju uzima svoje pero i potpisuje. This is a happy day, a day in the Balkans, a day in Athens, sunshine, and let's hope that this does mark the moment of an irreversible peace process for Bosnia-Herzegovina. Provarili ste se stavljanjem potpisa na Vens Ovenov plan. Srbi nisu izvršili samoubistvo. Srbi su ovim potpisom samo pokazali svijetu da će ostati i opstati na svojoj teritoriji, na teritoriji Republike Srpske, a parlament će reći svoju riječ. The Bosnian Serb assembly was Karadić's escape clause. His signature in Athens had been conditional on their ratification of the plan. The members gathered at their self-proclaimed capital, a former Olympic ski resort. The Greek Prime Minister, Konstantin Mitsotakis, accompanied Milosevic to help persuade them. We had a special parade, we had soldiers, and it was a kind of a very impressive show. It was for us important that Mr. Mitsotakis comes, that was a sign of recognition that we exist as a state. Karadic explained his acceptance of the plan. 
plan koji je vama dobro poznat. U osnovi je katastrofalan. Ja sam rekao u Skupštini, ovaj plan je katastrofalan, ali zbog mog parafa ja sam dužan da vam predložim da ga usvojite. Posljedice jednog teškog, tegobnog mira su možda mnogo manje od posljedica jednog nastavka rata u... One by one, the visiting leaders drove home the reasons for accepting the plan. Cijel taj projekat, to je, braćo i sestre, jedan istorijski provizorijum. Ne postoji, ali i ne država. A da se suprotnoj odluci raduju naši neprijatelji na čelu sa Turskom, koja je to već izvanično saopštila. Mi na to kto nise da si mera, ila i da na to kto nun. Nemojte danas izvršiti samoubistvo. The Bosnian Serbs' very own Napoleon, General Mladic, branded as a war criminal by the world's media, had been stopped by a rock fall on his way to the assembly. I karte koje je on podnosio, gledali smo se predsjednik Milošević i ja, nismo znali o čemu taj čovjek priča. I ovo je rezultat našega rukovodstva, našega naroda i naše vojske. Toliko je bilo jasno kada je on iznio dve mape i preko ove mape faktičkog stanja bila jedna folija na kojoj su bile ucrtane provincije. Pa su poslanici vrlo jasno mogli da vide vizuelno i ne razmišljajući šta Vensovenov plan teritorijalno daje Srbima. Presnik Milošević me pitao zašto ti ponovo ne govoriš, kažem ja, pitao sam, a šta da im kažem? Pa kaže da ih ubediš da prihvate. Ja sam rekao prvo moram ja da budem ubeđen da prihvate. Snubbed by the leader he himself had put in power, Milosevic rose to speak. It almost seemed that he would change the opinion of everybody. Smatram da odluka za mir nema alternativu. Smatram da je odluka za mir i osnaženje potpisa koji je stavio Radovan Karadžić u Atini odluka u interesu srpskog naroda u Bosni i u interesu celog srpskog naroda. He said that one can sacrifice for one's nation everything except the nation itself. And if you don't accept the Vance Owen plan, you are going to sacrifice your people. I was a mutisak that tada nije objavljena pauza da bi poslanici počeli da snaže argumente i da donesu pozitivnu odluku. In open defiance of Milosevic, the Bosnian Serb Assembly went into closed session. Milosevic and I have tried to get into the Poslanic Club, but they did not let us go. Only then we realized that the decision was definitely negative. Milosevic, how is it going, sir? He didn't say almost anything, he said we are leaving, and that's it, please, the car, and that's it. The Vance Owen plan was dead, and with it the last hope for a united, multi-ethnic Bosnia. The Serbs could now continue to build their independent state. In the south, the Bosnian Croats, who had been in alliance with the Muslims, also began to carve out their own state. Imali smo vrlo jedan, jedan težak front ovde sa Četnicima u Bosni i Hercegovini, dugačak barem, barem hiljadu kilometara. Ja sam činio sve da se ne otvori drugi front koji je stalno više u zraku. President Izabegović was desperate to hold on to his ally. He traveled through Serb lines to meet the commander of the Bosnian Croat army in Mostar. Ujutro smo se dogovorili, on je u jedan stan na nekom četvrtom katu, ujutro došao zapravo 
vlastne to starac si pa koji popili smo kavu. Ja sam taj dan imao dogovoran razgovor s njime o nekim pro, našim problemima dole u Hercegovini, jer je i tu, i tu situacija bila između nas dosta teška između armije i HVO-a. Gledajte, ne, ne treba kriti činjenicu da narod u Hercegovini bi bio najsretniji da Hercegovina i cijeli dio pripadne Hrvatskoj. Vidjelo se da Boban i njegovi ljudi idu na sukob. Idu na sukob zato da, da ocijepe komad Bosne i Hercegovine, da je pripoje Hrvatskoj. Jasno je taj plan bio skoro jasan. There was good reason to be afraid. The Croat president and his Serb counterpart had long toyed with dividing Bosnia between them. A year before, a television crew had chanced on the Bosnian Serb leader in Austria. He was there for a secret meeting with the more discreet leader of the Bosnian Croats, who had arrived in this car. The two leaders met behind these doors. To je bio jedan vrlo dobar, koristan razgovor. Boban je smatrao da Hrvati treba da se koncentrišu na svojim teritorijama. Herceg Bosna je e, kao ideja, bez imena, e, bila trajno u hrvatskom narodu u Bosni i Hercegovini. Jednostavno, došli smo do sazanja da postoje neke, neke teritorije koje su sporne, ali da ne vredi da ginu momci za to. Niti ćemo mi Srbi dobiti sve što želimo, niti će Hrvati dobiti sve što žele. I sastanak je trajao u smislu da su Srbi kazali da je njihova vojno, vojna opcija da granica Srbije mora biti rijeka Neretva. The Bosnian Croats turned on their former Muslim allies. The battle was orchestrated by the commander in chief of all Croat forces. Ja sam naredio da ne šaljemo e, hrvatske postrobe u unutrašnjost Bosne sve tamo do Dervente doboja radi sprečavanja e, ne, nego li da, da se ograničimo, ograničimo na, na obranu hrvatskih područja. Muslim villages stood in their way. The Croat army had for a year been bolstered by thousands of Muslim fighters. Now the Croats interned their former comrades. Kod dakle razoružavanja, kad su logori postali, ovaj, kad, kad je dakle neki ljudi trebalo svat, staviti, sjećam se da sam gospodinu Bruni Stojić, koji je bio ministar obrane, rekao, Bruno, pazite dobro, Nemojte raditi nešto čega ćemo se stiditi. At a military airport near Mostar, a journalist talked his way into one of the camps. Tad su svi ljudi bili dovedeni u te tankove, u te cisterne, praktično u te skladišta za benzin koja je koristila, koristila bivša Jugoslovenska narodna armija, gdje je bio taj, bila kasarna jedna. To su bili e, skladišta u zemlji, u brežuljcima, a bile su ogromne vrućine i imali su samo jedan mali otvorčić od 20 cm kvadratnih kroz kojih je ulazio zrak. Ljudi su bukvalno umirali. To je jednostavno jedna vrsta udila i pogreške koja se dogodi kad bude puno naših momaka masakrirano i tako dalje uzavre ta krv do granica kad se evo onda ne promišljaju u stvari do te mjere da se onda napravi jedan lobor kojeg se treba stidjeti kao čovjek i kao Hrvat. Responsibility for the camps went right to the top of the Croat government. Postojanje logora nije moglo biti bez znanja predsjednika Tuđmana. Onda sam ja ispomenuo logore i tko to, 
tko to organizira. On kaže, ne možemo se mi Hrvati samo optuživati, možda ima nešto, ali, ali i drugi imaju logore. To nije, to nije bilo opravdanje. Driven on by the fear of total annihilation, the lightly armed Muslims fought back. The Croat advance was broken. In retaliation, the Croats targeted the Mostar Bridge, which Muslims had built 400 years earlier. It was four years to the day since the Berlin Wall had come down, ushering in the new world order. But in the case of Bosnia, two American administrations had stood by, leaving the Europeans to police their own continent. There will be no unilateral use of United States force. As we have said before, we are not and we cannot be the world's policeman. The United States is not prepared uh, to put uh, ground troops uh, into Bosnia in order to uh, resolve or impose a solution onto the conflict there. The Americans decided it was time to weigh in. The strategy was to isolate the Serbs by first settling the war between the Muslims and the Croats. If you lined up all of the territorial issues that were on the table, and then you said how many of those would go away, if we had a Muslim-Croat federation supported by Croatia, a huge, huge portion of them disappeared off the table. The Americans applied some strong arm tactics. President Tudjman was warned that if he continued his war against the Muslims, Croatia too would face UN sanctions. It would leave uh, Croatia essentially isolated in the Balkans, uh, along with uh, probably uh, Serbia equally isolated. Uh, and uh, that didn't seem to be a particularly desirable long-term outcome for a country like Croatia. The Americans knew that Tudjman wanted to take back territories held by the Serbs in Croatia. To do so, he would need American support. President Tudjman risked having no support from the international community in its own efforts to recover the 27% of Croatia that's under uh, Serbian occupation. Tudjman chose the American way. The isto tako bilo mi je jasno da treba spriječiti da da na tlu Bosne ne dođe do civilizacijskog sukoba i između zapadne civilizacije i islamske civilizacije i zbog toga zapadni svijet je preporučivao nama sporazum sa muslimanima. Within weeks, President Clinton presided over a diplomatic triumph. The presidents of Croatia and Bosnia signed an alliance to end one of Bosnia's wars. The world was reminded of the other by an explosion in Sarajevo. Sixty-eight people died. I have just completed um, a meeting with advisors discussing the the terrible and outrageous incident uh, in Sarajevo yesterday. Have you decided against airstrikes, Mr. President? No. Uh, but the authority under which airstrikes can proceed requires the common agreement of our NATO allies. Which uh, resulted in, on Monday already, uh, in Peter Tarnoff and myself being uh, launched uh, to Europe to actually meet with the allies and get this thing going. Britain was the problem. The Foreign Secretary faced an emergency meeting of Cabinet. Key colleagues remained implacably opposed to any move that could draw the UK into conflict with the Serbs. I had to say, look, we're not just dealing with Bosnia. 
with dealing with the Atlantic Alliance. And there comes a point uh, when, if we are to keep the Alliance in reasonable repair, uh, we have to go along with things which we believe are risky. The British went along. NATO issued an ultimatum to the Serbs. They had 10 days to withdraw their heavy weapons from the hills around Sarajevo. Serbi nikad nisu primali ultimatum, ni od koga niti prihvatali pa neće ni u budući. I nema potrebe nama ultimatum da se Ne priti razliku između ova dva. Nije nama ultimatum nikakva postavlja. I ja sam odbio ultimatum jer je to bio put za dalja poniženja i za dalje iznuđivanje poteza od strane NATO pakta. With four days of the ultimatum to run, John Major arrived in Moscow for a previously arranged summit. The Russians were furious about the NATO threat against their clients, the Serbs. When uh, uh, the NATO ultimatum came, we were very worried that uh, the whole thing could, uh, uh, the, the place could be blown apart. What they were attacking was the fact that they hadn't been warned. And I sent a message, uh, either from Moscow or immediately I came back to Warren Christopher saying, watch it. I mean, th th this is, uh, there is, I, I use the phrase, extreme irritation. I wasn't saying to the Russians, keep out, this is obvious, it's not at all. I was saying, here is why we in NATO have acted as we have. Here's the background, here are the prospects. Please play your part. The challenge was to Yeltsin's taste. What they did not do was tell us of their own impending initiative. Please, please wait a little bit, uh, maybe 30 minutes, and uh, after that, I think we're going to have something to say. Within hours, the special envoy was in the Bosnian Serb capital with a letter from the Russian president. They read it aloud. And I, I could hear the, uh, I, could, I could see the impression the whole thing produced when there was Russian, uh, the letter of the Russian president where he requested more and more that they do the right thing. Russia was asking them not to go into confrontation and uh, to pull back and uh, as an assurance to them, uh, we would be prepared to move uh, our troops uh, uh, into, the, into the area. <laughs> On the last day of the ultimatum, columns of Russian troops moved in. Their presence in the areas around Sarajevo made a NATO strike all but impossible. Very good. The Serbs now complied and withdrew their heavy weapons. For the first time in 18 months, the people of Sarajevo could safely walk their streets. The Serbs had been bullied, in Sarajevo at least, into peace. Today, we are dedicating the future site of the American Embassy in Sarajevo the undivided capital of the independent and sovereign state of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Without seeming too presumptuous, I would like to repeat the words stated more than 30 years ago by President Kennedy, Yasam Sarayevka. But Sarajevo was not Berlin. When the Serbs tested Western resolve, the alliance was stretched to breaking point. Dalje sam htio da saveznicima muslimana, pre svega Amerikancima, pokažem da smo mi superiorni i da ćemo da skršimo njihovu vojnu, vojnu moć. The place he chose was the most important of the Muslim enclaves in eastern Bosnia, Gorazde. Like Srebrenica, it had been designated a UN safe area. I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning uh, on the 5th of uh, April and told that tanks 
had attacked into the town of Gorazda, that the town was in flames. The report was exaggerated, but Serb shells were landing in the town. General Rose decided no military action was required. The Security Council resolution uh, requires us to deter attacks against safe areas. Now, deterring is not the same as defending or protecting. The senior military officers were haunted by the fact that it was very unclear what would happen after an initial uh, airstrike. When two Serb tanks reached the town itself, General Rose judged the time had come for deterrence. I got the target on my nose. Hey, what are you aiming at, sir? I'm at it right at this tent. We have bomb splash, bomb splash. The first airstrike in NATO history hit a tent, the local Serb command post. The Serbs were not deterred for long. Their commander, General Mladic, retaliated by surrounding 150 UN personnel on his territory. They became his hostages. He raged on the telephone for 20 minutes. He was straining to, to not um, allow uh, any single member of Unprofort to leave his territory alive. It brought home to us the limits and the difficulties of using air power when you had such exposed forces on the ground. The UN sent a high-level delegation to negotiate for the release of their hostages with the Bosnian Serbs. Just after the salad, as it were, um, we got an urgent message saying that um, General Rose was, was trying to get through. Hello, Mr. Kashi. Michael, I'm here. A desperate General Rose had to use an open radio to reach his superiors. He told them that while they had been supping with the Bosnian Serb leaders, his troops in Garajde were being fired on by Serb gunners. Uh, the situation has deteriorated very rapidly while you've been uh, in the meeting. They're firing on us on our guys. We need air support now. Over. We embarked on one of the most surreal experiences of my of my UN peacekeeping career. Tamo je na jednom kraju vojni komandant Uprofora, na drugom kraju vojni komandant Srba, a politički vođa i Srba i Uprofora je bio tu sa dve mape, sa dva telefona. Uh, sir, I don't think that the, by the time the message gets to the units on the ground, uh, they will all be either dead or captured, Ava. We ourselves were in the room with the soldier holding on to walkie-talkie, in which, essentially, the UN commander was, was thinking of calling in uh, planes to bomb the people whom Mr. Karadzic was just talking to. I was very angry and said, I'm a young man, you have to tell me General Mladic told his leader that his guns were targeting the town and not UN positions. If UN soldiers were being shelled, it was their own fault. The UN had no choice but to call off the airstrike. They sent a helicopter to pick up one dying British soldier but the Serb offensive continued. That night, the Bosnian government summoned Mr. Akashi and General Rose to explain themselves. What is their attack now again? The chance that they did all day. I mean, you understand our position because yes. we've been saying this to you and General Rose since two weeks now. <laughs> this is I'm sorry, but this is... No, 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 I mean, you are right. You know, yeah. it has become a lot of a matter. It has also been a key. Primitivci oko Goražda, dakle iz redova te srpske vojske, shvatili da oni mogu jednostavno izaći na kraj sa NATO-om, da im niko ne može ništa i tako dalje. 
The Americans were determined to reassert their credibility. By shelling a hospital, shelling uh, the UN headquarters, taking United Nations hostages when we have never been involved in the war against them, when all we did was to do what we said we would do all along, which is if they threatened our people, we would use air power. Uh, they, are, they are the complete aggressors and wrongdoers. President Clinton demanded NATO strike immediately. I did receive high-level calls clamoring for a war to be waged against the Bosnian Serb side. Yes, um, on April 20th, we, Prime Minister and I, were alarmed. There were reports that, uh, which were exaggerated, that we were uh, alone and opposing uh, what was being uh, uh, proposed for NATO. The Americans forced through an ultimatum giving the Bosnian Serbs just 12 hours to pull back. We don't just go and take out a tank that's been striking the town. We're going to be able to attack a wide target set. The point is to give the message that enough is enough. Only one man is willing to continue negotiations with the Serbs, the UN Special Envoy, Yasushi Akashi. There was no way that Akashi was going to be stopped from going back into discussions um, with President Milosevic and the Bosnian Serbs. He felt only he was going to be able to avert an action which would push the peacekeeping mission uh, over the edge. In the Adriatic, 200 NATO planes were armed and waiting. In Belgrade, the special envoy emerged with Milosevic and Karadzic to announce another UN-brokered ceasefire. For two weeks, the Serbs had defied the UN and NATO. They had learned not to fear the international community. <coughs>